Amen. It's good to be back in Wolverhampton. A little bit colder, a little bit colder, but that's all right. Amen. God's helping us. It's sunny today. Um, like I said, it's always good to be back in Wolverhampton. And uh, every time I come back to this building, I am always encouraged as I'm reminded. You know, when my wife and I first moved here in 2004 and we were looking for a building, uh, this place used to be, I think, the West Indian Community Center, and it was shut down. And, uh, and Cheryl and I, we laid hands on the building outside, praying for it. And uh, we didn't get it, but here we are. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, delay is in denial. Amen. And uh, I'm always encouraged about that. Uh, sometimes things we pray about, uh, uh, it may not happen in the time that we see it, but it happens at the right time. And uh, we thank God for that. Uh, I want to look at a sermon of entitled, Time Changes Things, from Psalms 37. Psalms chapter 37, verses 34 to 38. And if the uh, ushers, if you could guys get me some water, I, um, it, that would really be helpful. Psalm chapter 37, verses 34 to 38. And uh, we're just going to read it. It says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, but the transgressor shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, uh, you would speak to hearts and lives today. Save those who need Jesus uh, and edify your church in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it just me right here, music? Oh, it's a children's church. All right. I, was, I think uh, it's, a, it's a heavenly host or something. Amen. <laughs> Um, you know, most of us here, you know, we've even in passing may have heard of Alexander the Great. Uh, he was that great uh, Macedonian king that uni uh, created the Greek Empire that stretched all the way from Macedonia, or rather from, yeah, the Mediterranean, all the way to India. Uh, one of his greatest challenges, however, was when he invaded the land of Afghanistan. And uh, I read somewhere that he lost more men in a day fighting in Afghanistan and he did in all his wars to create the empire as far as it was then and he said these words uh, he says uh, he has a quote he says may God keep you away from the venom of the cobra the teeth of the tiger and the revenge of the Afghans and uh, and and I thought that's very interesting because uh, uh, it was a lesson that the British didn't learn because they too in expanding their empire in the 1800s went to Afghanistan uh, and, you know, you can watch documentaries on it, man. They had some really hard times uh, in Afghanistan. It was also an issue with the Russians. The Russians invaded Afghanistan in 1979 uh, all the way to 1990. It was an 11-year war. Many believe that is what uh, cracked the economy of the Soviet Union, which is why the Soviet Union broke up uh, into the different countries it's now, it's, uh, it is nowadays. Um, and this was something the Americans didn't learn when they invaded in 2001. And, uh, you know, I was reading something very interesting. There was a, a former Soviet sergeant. His name is Igor Grego uh, Gregovich. He's, he said this when America invaded Af Afghanistan. He says, it's impossible to conquer the Afghans. Alexander the Great couldn't do it. The British couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And the Americans won't do it. No one can. And we know two years ago what happened that the Americans pulled out, uh, uh, and uh, it was a real travesty, it was a real, it was a real debacle, you know, it was a real, real issue. Uh, and so the question is, how is it all these superpowers in world history, how is it that they were not able to defeat the Afghanistanis? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's not like uh, these guys were uh, major military powers themselves. Uh, um, I was reading an article, and it was speaking about this man named Rick Hillier. Rick Hillier is a general with the Canadians, and you know the Canadians were also allies with the British and the Americans and the Australians when they invaded Afghanistan. Uh, 
And he said he and his forces were constantly fighting the Taliban, uh, constantly attacking them, uh, pushing them back, winning victory after victory with their superior firepower. Uh, and these guys kept coming. And so he had captured one Taliban commander and asked him, why are you guys, why do you guys keep fighting? And the commander said something that forever haunted Hillier. He said, you have the watches, but we have the time. And, and what he means by that is, if you have a watch, it eventually it's going to run out of juice. Whether it's wind up or an apple, it's going to die. But, and, and so, you know, the idea is that you foreigners, man, you know, eventually you're gonna, you have all the firepower, you have all the, 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 the ammunition, uh, but you just don't have the will and the determination to see this thing through. We can wait. You can bomb us till kingdom come, we're still gonna be around. Or you have the watches, we have the time. And what makes the Afghanis, uh, uh, the Afghans rather so powerful in this sense, uh, is they have the ability just to wait it out. <laughs> we're gonna get attacked and attacked and attacked and you can always beat us on the battlefield, but you'll never beat us uh, when it concerns perseverance. When it comes to just riding things out, uh, what makes us successful in the end uh, is our ability to persevere. Uh, and I'm going to tell you one strength. If you're going to make it for Jesus, uh, and you're going to see the will of God for your life, uh, you've got to learn to outlast the enemy. You've got to learn to be able to persevere uh, and to keep on going until you see... Uh, God do what he promised to do in your life. Let me tell you one secret of life is time changes things. I don't want us to look at that from our text. Verse 35, uh, it says these words, I have seen the wicked uh, in great power. This psalm is written by David, King David. He's not a theoretician. He's not some guy in a university talking about ideals. Uh, this is something that he has experienced. Uh, he says, I have seen with my own eyes uh, the wicked in great power. He's seen people in positions of authority that have abused the power that they have, uh, have abused the authority that they have. Uh, and this is a man who has seen uh, a wicked people in power, whether it was Goliath, uh, whether it was Nabal or Doeg the Edomite or other individuals like this. David over the course of his life uh, has seen the wicked uh, in great power. Amen. Uh, and one of the injustices of life is uh, why do the wicked prosper today? Why do we see so many wicked people uh, in a position of authority uh, and abuse that authority on the masses? On, 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 the, on, on, on society, uh, and if you've been around long enough, you will see the wicked in great power, whether it's, uh, it's a boss at work. Anyone has any wicked? I've had wicked bosses in the past. Amen. This could be a politician. It could be someone in your own family, an abusive parent or grandparent today, uh, and this is how life is. Last year, I read a book called The Confidence Game by a woman called... Maria Konnikova, and she pointed out that psychopathy, and psychopathy is, you know, why some people are just kind of just nutty, and, 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 and she pointed out very interestingly, and, and she wasn't trying to be this ultra-feminist when she said this, but she said that psychopathy was more masculine than feminine, and this is the root of many of the top military leaders of all time, whether it is uh, Napoleon or even Alexander the Great, uh, there is something about them that's a bit demented. And it's the same thing with uh, uh, today's criminals. A lot of criminals, especially top-notch cr criminals, uh, there's a level of psychopathy in their, in their lives. Uh, and, and she said it's not only confined to illegal activities, uh, it is also seen in the workplace. She points out banking. She said in stockbroking, most stockbrokers uh, have this level of psychopathic tendencies. And, and, and she said, you know, so you don't have to be a, a, a someone who breaks the law uh, 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 in, in what we call breaking the law. She said this is a common thing, and she pointed out this is why you have many more male CEOs than women CEOs. Uh, they talk about feminism and, and, and sexism and all that kind of stuff, uh, but the reality is, she says, psychopathy is a mental condition. She says people has a reduced sense of empathy and remorse, uh, a bold and daring personality, out-of-control behavior, 
highly intelligence, high intelligence, and when you combine those traits with ambition and even narcissism, uh, you find someone who will push their very way to the top in life. There are some people, we just don't have that kind of psychopathic tendency to, to just brutalize our way to the top. You know what I'm saying? We are not willing to step on toes and, and crush people. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? We would like to get to the top, but there's some things we are not going to do. Amen. Uh, and, and it's not to say that there ain't no wicked women out there. Let me just say it's a man thing. But for every Jezebel, you have your Pharaoh and your Haman and your Herod and your, your, your Pontius Pilate. Uh, and uh, when we look at our own government, when you look in Parliament, uh, it is full of people who are psychopaths. And I'm not just saying that as a pejorative today. I'm saying it uh, as a proper state of mind. These are people willing to do anything, say anything. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You just look at Boris, good old Boris, uh, Matt Hancock. Uh, uh, and it's not just the conservatives. Uh, Labour have their fair shares of nutters as well. This is, this is how life is. Uh, and this is why, let me tell you this, uh, this is one of the problems, and this is not even my notes. One of the problems with us is we keep cussing politicians. And what happens is good people who want to do well, you know what, they, they don't like the abuse. Because once you're a good person and become a politician, people instantly call you a crook and a devil. And you know, good people don't want to take that kind of stuff. So they just pull out and do something else. The only people who stare at people are the crooks and are the devils. And they don't care. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? This is why we can see the wicked in great power. It is a natural thing in life. Amen. Um, and I'm going to say this, listen, ambition is not a bad thing. We all should be ambitious, but there are some people who are driven. And it becomes, uh, uh, is where ambition is turbocharged. And these uh, are the why the wicked are in great power, whether in the time of David uh, or whether in 2023. This is what life is all about. And so sometimes we can start to think, God, why is it that you allow wicked people in this position? Many times because good people don't want to rise up. And wicked people end up where they are, creating a, 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 an unjust and an unbalanced society. And so when David wrote these words, I do believe, however, the person he meant when he said this was King Saul. King Saul was a man who was the wicked in great power. And this is where we can get messed up because though Saul was a wicked man in great power, he was put there by God. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, Saul was always like that. You know, it's not like God said, ah, oh, you're wicked, I'm going to make you king. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is that Saul started out right, uh, but over time, uh, he changed. They say power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, Saul became corrupt uh, over time, uh, and it wasn't like uh, someone who usurped their powers, like uh, 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 Zimri or Omri or, or Basha, one of these kings uh, uh, from Israel after Saul, uh, 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 who once they were in power, uh, uh, they had to crush people to stay in power. Saul was put there by God, uh, but he changed over time, uh, and David is frustrated because, uh, you know, though he knows Saul uh, is wicked, and he could easily take Saul out, he had opportunity time and time again. He didn't uh, because he knew God put him there. God would have to deal with him uh, another way. And so we got to understand this today, that, you know what? Unjust people are going to be in positions of power. Like I said, at work, at home, even uh, in society, uh, we can feel the brunt of injustice, amen? Uh, and that is how life is. I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native uh, green tree. Now, um, you know, here in England, a lot of times you see trees always clustered together, man. But now and again, you may see a patch of land and you will just see one huge tree by itself. You know, if, you, you know, if you're from the third world, you probably see this many times. Uh, you'll just see one large tree that, you know, I, I can remember as a kid uh, uh, growing up in Jamaica. And I remember, you know, when I used to uh, drive to where my dad's family is from, I can remember certain areas, man, we used to see a, a tree by itself, and it was just huge, uh, and it's just spreading out, man. And even, you know, I was there a couple of months ago, driving through the same area, and sure enough, uh, those tr trees are still there. And, and, and it's something about those things that is so impressive uh, that gets your attention, uh, amen. Uh, and this is what David says, that there are certain people in life, the wicked in great power, they are like a native green tree, they are 
out there. You can't escape them. Uh, it is there. It captures your attention. Uh, and the term native green tree in the Hebrew is a tree planted in its own soil. In other words, that tree has been there from it was a seed uh, growing all the way up. It took years, but they were in the same place uh, all the time, uh, growing, developing, spreading out, uh, becoming larger. And, and David is saying that in contrast to transplanting. How many know you could take a seed uh, and it starts to grow, it starts seedling, and you move it over here and you move it over there, and it never really develops because every time you move uh, a, a, a plant, uh, it's a shock to the system. It has to redevelop its roots and it takes a while to get established again. You could have two similar plants. Uh, you keep one where it's at and you keep transplanting the other one. Uh, and I guarantee you, uh, the one that is left by itself is going to grow further and bigger than the one that keeps moving around. David is contrasting himself uh, to Saul because Saul was always there uh, growing and developing, uh, becoming king. At first he had some enemies, uh, but he had victories. Eventually all the noises got quiet. Uh, he became a prosperous king while David uh, was banished into exile. He was always on the run. Uh, he was in Moab. He was in uh, 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 with the Philistines. He was in the wilderness. Uh, David was always being transplanted while this man is in one place growing and developing. And it's unjust. It's unjust when you see people like this who are somehow successful in life. While you who are trying to live for God, man, it's like you can catch a break. You know, one thing after another. Has that life ever been like that? Just, one, just as you recover from one thing, bam, something else and something else. And it's as if you never get a chance to just sit down and grow and to develop. You know... There's another reason why people are in positions of, of, of power who are wicked. Uh, uh, and it's that, uh, you know, there's some people, man, uh, once they're in a certain place, they're no longer accountable to anyone. They can do what they want, say what they, they want to say, uh, and people below them are afraid to challenge them uh, because there's a cancel. We live in cancel culture. Amen. Social, professional consequences, man. Uh, and there are people in position of power. They're, they have so much influence uh, and so much connection. That's why whistleblowers, uh, you know, you hear government all the time talk about, we welcome whistleblowers. Yeah, really now. You know what I'm saying? There's a guy named Julian Assange uh, who is in prison in, in London right now in Woolwich for whistleblowing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, th th these things happen, amen, because when you're in a position of power, you can use uh, whatever structure to keep people quelled. Uh, and what happens is, is that good people, may be, they look like the bad guys. And the bad guys make themselves look like uh, the good guys. Uh, and this is where good people can fall from the path of righteousness. Because God, why does this happen? Why is it that I'm doing right and bad things keep happening, um, and bad people do bad things, and good is happening to them. This is what the psalmist said in Psalm 73, verse 2, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my step had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked man. It's a, it's, it's a case, man, where you feel like, what's the point of serving God? What's the point of doing right? When doing right amounts to nothing. That in spite of me doing the right, it's, it's almost as if somehow uh, that, uh, that, that serving God is like, it's like idealism, it's theory. It, it, it doesn't make sense in real life. It's, a, it's, 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 it's fancy, airing, uh, uh, cla castles in the sky kind of thing, but it doesn't based on real life. And many times people can start twisting and becoming bitter. Listen, I've been around long enough to see good people become bitter and twisted. To see people change. You know what I'm saying? You, you see, you know, I, I was on the phone to a, 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 a lady about four months ago. She left church a couple years ago. I've known her since she's 19. She is perhaps right now in her late 40s. Uh, and uh, she, she rang me about something. And I could tell from her voice that she changed. So I asked her about her husband. She kicked out her husband. And, and it, was a, it was like... Man, I remember, man, where you were always smiling. I said that to her. I remember, man, where you were always a joy to talk to. And just hearing on the phone, something transpired in her life. Uh, and it's a sad thing when you see people just change. 
you know, Benedict Arnold, I don't know if anyone heard of him. He was one of America's greatest generals. Uh, you know, uh, he would have been up there with uh, George Washington or uh, General Patton or uh, Ulysses S. Grant. But, but he's remembered as a traitor. Because Benedict Arnold, he was in the American War for Independence against Britain. He was one of George Washington's greatest generals. Uh, he was the man responsible for the Battle of Saratoga, one of the most strategic battles. He, he won that battle on, the, on behalf of the Americans. Uh, but he got shot in the leg. And back in them days, those bullets were these round balls. When they hit you, man, they shatter your leg. Normally, you, your, your leg or your arm would be amputated. He begged for them not to do it. Uh, and somehow the surgeons managed to save the leg. But because the bone was crushed a certain way, uh, uh, when it healed, he was like a couple inches shorter than the other one. It took a long time to heal. Uh, and while he was being healed, those below him were promoted above him. Promotions that he felt he should have, subordinates got it. And uh, another general, actually, I think it was Horatio Gates, got the credit for his victories. And, 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 and Benedict Arnold was so upset at this, uh, he joined the British. And, and gave uh, 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 certain, he wanted to get uh, a West Point, the, the military academy. He was going to give it over to the British, he got foiled. But, but he's forever remembered as a traitor, as a Judas because here was a good man turned because of injustice. I, did, I sacrificed for my country. I took a bullet in the leg for my country. And is this how my country repays me? And good people can... Let me tell you, you've been in church long enough. If you don't keep your heart right, you can find yourself twisted. Because life uh, and injustices that come your way is enough to spin you out. But here's what David says in verse 36. This is verse 35. I've seen a wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree, yet he passed away. The, in the margin also says, I, I passed by and he was no more. You know, it's like a tree that's been there for years. The one day you pass by it and it's a stump. If you've been like that, you, 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 you walk down a certain road all the time. One day the council comes uh, and has cut that tree down and all there is is a stump. That tree's been there before you were born. All of a sudden, man, the council in their infinite wisdom uh, came and just cut it down. Things can change. That's what, that's what Paul, uh, uh, David is saying. Uh, he's saying people who look invincible and powerful uh, and seemingly always going to be in a position of power, uh, uh, no matter what they do or what they say, uh, one day they could be here and the next minute, uh, just like that, they're gone. Because what looked permanent... This great green spreading tree uh, is gone. You know, recent history, you know, you'll see things like Muammar Gaddafi or Hosni Mubarak from Egypt. You know, uh, these dictators were around for many years uh, and just like that they were gone. You know, these things happen uh, in Western society and people were untouchable. People like Bernie Madoff for years, people said this man was a crook. But no one would, would take them up on it. Uh, 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 Harvey Weinstein, uh, 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 Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, people like this uh, who are in position of power for years. And people are like, these people are corrupt. Uh, and, and the establishment is like, nah, these people are great. They're in the cover of magazines. And then one day, just like that, they're just taken down because life isn't static. Time changes things. It may, ta it may take a while for the ball to start rolling. Once it starts rolling, it rolls quickly. This is how life is. It takes such a long time, you think it will never change, but when it does, it does. I remember when I was a teenager, I worked for um, Moni's department store in, in Brixton, South London. And I worked there in my late teens, early 20s. And um, the head of security was a guy named Jim Freeman. This is early 90s. And... Um, Jim was there well over 30 years. He was probably there from the late, the late 50s, early 60s, at the latest early 60s. Probably there from the late 50s. He's, he's like a piece of furniture, man. And, uh, and Jim, you know, head of security, every day is at the back entrance. We had to, you know, the, 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 the department store, the main entrance was on the uh, Brixton High Street. The, the, the workers' entrance was at the back. And Jim was always there at the back. He's head of security. 
and he'd give the most racist jokes to the black workers every time. Jim would just crack these racist jokes, man. Uh, and you, you know the black people, they're just vexed, but they just held, they, they ignored him, treated him like he didn't exist, uh, but he just laughed even more to himself. You know what I'm saying? He, and, and he was like that for years, man, and Jim kept the racist jokes coming because Jim is there for 30, he's an untouchable man. Jim is there. He wasn't about to stop. Nobody could get rid of him. The, the HR manager, uh, when, I, when I was working there, they got a new HR manager. Her name was Rhiannon, Rhiannon Clark. And I was probably about 21 at the time. She was, uh, she was probably about, I remember thinking she's old. You know, I don't remember this, but she was probably about 28. You know, when, you, when you're 21, 28 years look old, you know? And, um, and, and Rhiannon, she, she was good at her job. And, but what happened is she fell in love with the head of maintenance. The maintenance manager was a good-looking guy, uh, uh, but the big wigs up the top didn't want the managers to be involved in any relationship, so they gave her an ultimatum. It says, uh, you better break this relationship up or you, you, you got to go. And so Rhiannon loved this guy, and, uh, and, and so she found herself a new job. But the last day of her job, her last act as HR manager was to fire Jim. <laughs> and I remember that Friday, man. And Rihanna had already left, you know what I mean, for the day, man. And I remember the security guards that worked for Jim escorted him out the back entrance. And Jim is red. And Jim is cussing. Up. And I remember some of the black ladies who would work like in Estelle Lauder and all of the, you know, the fashion thing. They're laughing their heads off uh, as Jim is just uh, unceremoniously booted out the place. In an hour, just like Friday morning when he came in, he had no idea that was his last day. And I remember going in on Monday, because remember, man, every day I go in, I see Jim. I went on Monday looking for Jim, <laughs> and he was not to be found. <laughs> That's what the scripture says, man. Behold, he was no more. Because that's how life is. And these things happen. David was on the run from Saul for years. And one day Saul, God judged him on the battlefield and he was killed by the Philistines. Joseph was either a slave or in prison for 13 years. And one day, just like that, he became prime minister of Egypt. That morning he got up in prison. He did not know at night he'd be in silk pajamas in the palace. Because God can turn things around just like that. And if you stay around long enough, you will see it happen. Not gradually, but just like that. Verse 38, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. See, God will bring judgment on the wicked. Amen. And one of the reasons is that the sinner will reap the harvest of his or her sin. You know, it takes time for fruit to grow. You know what I'm saying? If you sow, regardless of what kind of crop it is, it takes a while for things to develop, the fruit to come. And some sin takes a while, but it does come. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 126, verse 5. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, you got to understand that this is reversed for the sinner. For the Christian, we sow in tears, we reap in joy. For the sinner, they sow in joy and reap in tears. The problem with us is we always associate joy with reaping for everyone. And so when we see the sinner rejoicing, we think they're reaping. And when we see them living a certain way uh, and life seems good to them, uh, we can start to get messed up in our heads and start to think, hang on, how is it that I'm sowing in tears uh, and yet they're reaping in joy? Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? And sometimes what happens uh, is that we get so caught up in this uh, that we say, forget about righteousness, man. Because them out there, they're doing so well, we forget that they're sowing. Amen. We think they're reaping, but they're sowing. I mean, you could, ha you could be someone working hard, you save your pennies, and you, you can only take a holiday to Skegness. You know what I'm saying? While your next door neighbor has taken the equity out of his house, and gone to Dubai on holiday. 
buy a brand new car at HP and you know in logic uh, it don't make sense but for some reason uh, you believe their life is better than yours you know what I'm saying? We, this, we view people rejoicing now as if they're reaping. Uh, and we see this in society. Uh, let me tell you what we're seeing in society now. People sowing. Amen. Enjoy. Give it a few years. You know what I'm saying? You see the insanity. You don't even know it's like we're being gaslighted. You know, I, I saw something a few months ago that if you lose weight, you're a fat phobic. I don't even have seen that. There's a movement amongst fat people to say <laughs> losing weight is fat phobic. So I've lost 50 pounds. That makes me fat phobic. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, what? You know, it's like, it's like, uh, am I taking crazy pills? People are taking these people seriously. When people say a man can become a woman and a woman can, can become a man uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and all of a sudden, I was like, it's like, well, maybe thousands of years of people, maybe they're just crazy. Give it a few years. You know what I'm saying? Give a few years and see these people pushing fat, fat, fat centricism or whatever it is, uh, and fat power and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Die of heart attacks. You know what I'm saying? And listen, big up yourself. Listen, if you want to be overweight and whatnot, that's your. But don't say it's, it's, it's not healthy. People say it's good. When I lost 50 pounds, my blood, I had high blood pressure, went back to normal. I was, uh, I, I, was, I was a stage before pre-diabetic. I was insulin resistant. My insulin level is normal now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my, my legs don't creak when I go up the stairs. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, how's it? How's that? You know what I'm saying? But people make you start to think somehow uh, the way people live in now, uh, that, that's his joy. And we're just the weirdos. They ain't reaped yet. You give it time, you're going to see things happen because time changes things today so my last point the victory of the righteous because in verse 37 it says mark the blameless man and observe the righteous the the, the the upright mark and observe why why because to the normal unsaved person um, the blameless person the upright person is just a pawn in the game of life is just a little fish being swallowed by sharks today uh, never to be seen again totally unimportant the people we should note uh, are those impressive green trees the wicked today spreading its branches uh, because those are the people who have the power but the bible says no mark and observe uh, the blameless and the upright today why because for one it's an amazing thing to see how the blameless and the upright, people who are truly blameless and people who are upright, do not allow the injustices of life to corrupt their hearts. That's David today. That's Joseph. I mean, you think about Joseph for a moment, man, uh, that he's a slave. And he says, you know what? All right, no problem. I'm a slave. I'm going to be the best slave I can be. And then after that, gets falsely accused of rape and thrown in prison. You would have said, burn that, man. Later. <laughs> I'm trying to do right and then some I back. No, I ain't doing this no more. But the blameless and the upright keep a right heart. Note that person that when injustice is done, it doesn't mean that they're losers and evil or rather pathetic and passive, but to keep a right heart is one of the hardest things you can do and one of the most courageous things you can do. Anybody can become twisted and bent out of shape. And that's what the world expects you to do because it's only right to respond to being unjustly treated uh, with you being bent out of shape. That's what people expect you to do. And when you don't do that, they say, ah, yeah, you're an idiot. No, I'm the most courageous person that I can fight the tendency in my own, my own heart to just get vexed and twisted and to remain pure in heart today. It is a hard thing to do. Anyone here who's been through injustice knows it's hard, hard, the hardest thing to get up in the morning uh, and be right, to, to bless people, to speak positive, uh, and not, not use the negative circle. You know, you have some people, every, man, the way people treat me, every minute that's all they're talking about, the injustice, the injustice, the injustice, the injustice. There's no courage in that. The courage is someone who's willing to bear it. Like a Nelson Mandela, 27 years in prison. You don't tell. Listen, when a man came out of prison, that man could have created a civil war in South Africa and said, kill all the whiteies. 
and he didn't. Are you with me? Because it takes real courage to keep your heart right. And that's why the Bible says, mark and observe the blameless and the upright. You know, I remember a pastor. What inspired me, and this, this sermon is 20 years in the making, there was a pastor I knew, very successful 20 years ago. And I wouldn't say it's arrogance, but you know when you're fruitful, man, there are people who don't like you. Let me tell you, man, just because people are pastors, people are pastors don't mean that they're spiritual. And I remember there were a couple of guys who did not like him because it's like everything this man touched turned to gold. You know what I'm saying? For a young guy to have so much influence. and, and uh, But anyway, they, he had two pastors who accused him of something. Wasn't true, but for whatever reason it went through and he got disciplined. He couldn't preach out for six months. But I remember he took it well. I, I, I was actually impressed because most people I know, if it, bad things, they had to spin out. He took it well. He took the six months. Uh, and after that, he went on with life. And life actually got better for him down the road, man. He became more successful. And so. But anyway, cut a long story short. In the 20 years, those two guys who accused him both got removed from their positions, man. I mean, uh, uh, the irony is one of them got removed. It, it was... It, 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 again, very similar situation where it was r wrongly assumed something happened, but he just quit in the end. He couldn't keep his own heart right. I found it interesting. And I had to ring this pastor. I said, you know what, man? I'm so impressed at how you handle it. And now 20 years have passed, and his two accusers are gone, and he's still powering on. Because time changes things. God will prove you in the end. He will show to the world you are right. One of them actually rang him and apologized, he said. Do, do, you see, do you see what I'm saying? You hang around long enough, time changes things. And like I said, I marked and I observed because I expected him to spin out. And he kept the right heart. And he kept it through. And I'm telling you, church, uh, you've got to recognize that there are people watching you when you face injustices. Your children are watching you. How you respond uh, when people treat you unjustly. How do you respond? Do you respond naturally and lash out? These people are wicked and blah, blah, blah. Or do you bear it up with grace and say, you know what, God, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I have to like it. But I'm saying is that you keep your heart right in it. And say, I'm still going to do right even if everyone else does wrong. Your kids are watching you. New converts are watching you. Other people around you are watching you to see how you conduct. Will you do right? Mark and observe the blameless and the upright. The Bible says, for the future of that man is peace. Peace, shalom, holistic, encompassing uh, 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 peace. It's a, it's a peace that defies understanding. It's a, it's a peace that completely surrounds you. And this is David's testimony. Again, this is not theory. This, David is speaking in the third person. This is who he is today. Someone who's been there, seen it, and done it. That he's kept a right heart. Amen. And you know, you think about David as well. You know, David is on the run for years from Saul. Saul is out to kill him. He can never settle up. And the Bible says something very interesting. Uh, what, two chapters or a chapter before uh, 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 David, before Saul was king and David was made king, the Amalekites came to his village of Ziklag and kidnapped uh, him and his men, their wives and their children uh, and their goods. And the Bible says his men wanted to stone him. Uh, David could have said, you know what, man? God, this is it, man. The, I, I've been on the run for years and now my family's been taken and my own men want to kill me. I'm, I'm done with this serving God thing. But the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And a chapter later, Saul was dead and David was made king. Imagine if he had quit right then. And this is how I've seen some people, man, just when victory was around the corner, he said, God, this is one too far. This is one challenge too much. This is one difficulty, God. Hey, I've been good all this time. I am justified in doing wrong now. And you would lose out. I had lunch with a friend of mine recently. He told me of a man he knew who fell out with his manager. And uh, the manager was in the wrong. And when nothing was done, he quit. But the manager was moved a couple months later. And it's like, bro, you gave up a good job? You know, if you just hold on, time changes things. 
So verse 34, it says, wait on the Lord. What does it mean to wait on God today? It means this. Live your Christian life as if everything was always going well. You know, it's easy to live for God when things are well. Money's in the bank. You're healthy. Everything is fine. Pray, read your Bible, come to church, go on outreach, involve yourself in ministry, be with fellowship. It's easy to do all that when life is good. What happens when life turns 180? Can you still do that? To wait on the Lord is to keep doing what you've always done even if the conditions turn for worse. You know, it's like, it's like being a marathon runner. You know, if you're someone do 5K, 10K, marathon, half marathon, you know, you have people in church who do that crazy stuff. But if you're one of them people, man, you'll know running the first mile ain't, ain't hard. First mile is easy, you know what I'm saying? You know, but when you reach well, mile 28, or whatever it is, you got to run the last mile like the first. And how many know at the last mile, your body wants to give up? Your lungs are burning. Your legs are killing you. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, your energy is depleted, but you've got to continue running. You know what I mean? You don't want to stop and say, oh, man, I'm done. No, you keep running. And that's the same thing with what's waiting on God is. Is you keep doing the same thing as if everything was going well. That's what waiting on God is all about. Don't just pull out the race because you don't have the same energy. You must persevere. One of the greatest powers you will ever have is the ability just to ride it out. Having done everything the Bible says, to stand. It didn't say to run. It says to stand. Can you do... It's a powerful thing that everything is going on and you're still there. There, day after day, month after month. Wait on the Lord and keep His way. In the midst of injustice, it's very tempting to stay off God's way and go on your way because God's way clearly ain't working out I gotta figure out my own way I gotta make my own plans and your own way always leads to a dead end you know anyone read the Hobbit Bilbo Baggins and the dwarfs they're walking through Mirkwood Forest they're gonna go to the lonely mountain and face Smog the dragon and uh, wood elves warn them said you gotta stay on the path S don't deviate, stay on the path. But some of the elves uh, went off the path, they got disoriented, uh, uh, confused, and got caught by giant spiders. Let me tell you, that's how some Christians are, man. God tells you to stay on the path. Stay on the path. Stay on the path. God, I need deliverance. Stay on the path. God, I want you to solve the problem now. Stay on the path. Stay well, later for the path, man, and then you get gobbled up. Amen. <laughs> God's path is the only path. Keep your heart free from bitterness from resentment, from unforgiveness, because you'll stray off the path. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. See, God in the end will allow you to inherit. But the key is perseverance. That's the key. Not you do it. You just got to keep doing what you've always been doing. Now, I read a story about this man. He was, um, uh, he was just a normal office worker, and his boss was struggling with his paperwork and gave him some of the paperwork to do. He did it, it, was, he did it quite easily, and uh, somehow the CEO found out that he was doing the boss and congratulated him on it. You know, hey, good job, man. His boss saw the CEO, what, the Congress, and got vexed. and said, yeah, you can do my job? Well, you're going to do all my job now. I put everything on a tray. And he, he said, no, he said he kept doing it. It, it, was, it was, he could find it easy to do. It was a problem. Huh? But the CEO again found out, fired his boss, gave him the job in the office. <laughs> he didn't get vexed or upset. He just kept on going. I'm going to tell you, if you as a Christian understand that God sees everything today, then you keep on going. Amen. Don't sabotage what God is doing in your life. Because you see, can you see at the end of the day, the one who faced far more injustice than you ever will is Jesus. On the cross, Jesus did not deserve to be on the cross. Jesus, the only human being who never sinned, was nailed on the cross for our sins today. The just for us, the unjust. And if there's any real, if there's injustice in that sense, is that the innocent died on behalf of the guilty, but God deemed it so for us. 
Jesus understands injustice because he himself faced it uh, and he turned it around on the cross. You know, the cross, cross is that great symbol where God took the injustice and he absorbed it in himself. Amen. To give justice to us. That we could be right with God. That we could be made justified before God today. And on that cross he says, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. Let us emulate the character of Jesus today. Because Christ shows to us today someone who is able to take the unjust things. Uh, and yet God through the cross turn it around for our good. Jesus is not untrustworthy today. He is not unfaithful. Uh, he will come through for us. I want to close with this story. Um, when we left here in Wolverhampton in August 2011, the one month later uh, in September, I think it was September, um, it was very short uh, while after leaving here, my first convert in Jamaica is this 15-year-old kid named Kejel. Kejel had a tough upbringing. He, I mean, brutal upbringing. He never knew his father. I mean, it was so bad. Uh, you know, he was spinning out in, in high school, and uh, his aunt took him, said, I know where your dad is, took him to Kingston. We're in Mandeville in the middle of Jamaica. Took him to Kingston like an hour and a half away. Showed him his dad across the street and said, you see your dad, let's go back home. I mean, talk about mad. Like, what's that going to do? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just mad. But, but Kedjel, man, he grew up without a dad. His mom didn't want him. Her, her, his mom was with another man, and the man didn't want him in the house. So he had to live with his grandmother. And his grandmother was abusive. His mother, grandmother cussed him out, called him no good. You would never amount to anything. You're worthless. Uh, and I remember one day he came to me in tears, man, you know, about what his grandmother was saying to him. And I said to him, listen, man, hey, you know, listen, God's going to help you. Life isn't always going to be like that. Now, fast forward 10 years, and Kedjel is still serving God in Mandeville. We'd moved back. We'd moved back to England. I think I was in uh, Bristol. Yeah, I was in Bristol at the time. And a friend of mine from Canada, um, uh, Gary Rodney, he had an impact team to the Mandeville Church, the church I was at. And uh, one of the ladies in the church, Brianna, met Kedjel, fell in love. They got married, uh, and uh, he moved to Canada. And so I, I preached a sermon in July in South London. And 30 minutes before the service started, Kedjel just texted me something out of the blue. Something like, do you remember saying to me, you can't make them like you, but you can make them respect you? And so here's the, uh, the thing. He said, remember a long time ago we first met? And I was telling you some family situation I was going through, and you said to me, you can't make them like you, but you can make them respect you. Lord, well, I have all their respect now. <laughs> because uh, Kedjel is doing well. He's doing fantastic. Uh, and, he, he, you know, I said, well, you got, you got to show me, man. I said, I'm using that in tonight's sermon. <laughs> and so he sent me the screenshot of what his grandmother said to him. Good, no, no, good morning, happy birthday to you. God bless you, long life, good health, love you. <laughs> How's your wife and baby doing love? You know, it's like, Granny, Granny, you hated this kid. His mother couldn't say, but now he said, man, I have all their respect. Uh, and if you next slide, please, ladies at the back, there is Kedjel, his wife and his son. And, uh, and, and, and I said, Kedjel, he's now about 27 years old. I say, see Kedjel, if you just keep serving God, if you just keep being patient, man, it isn't always going to be like this because time changes things. Amen? Could everybody bow their eyes closed all of this room today? You're here today. You're not a Christian. You're not born again. You're not right with God.